and welcome to this month's tutorial, which is all about Pas de Cheval. The first round we're going to work on straight leg and in the second round when we repeat it, we will add Pas de Cheval into plié. Let's begin. Now I'm going to first face away from you to make it easier for you to see the directions and which legs and arms I'm using. So we begin standing in Ippelmung towards point A, the front left corner of the room in fifth position with the right leg in front. We begin arms to first, arms to fourth position, also called high third or in the Vaganova system, big pose. We begin with the flick of the foot into a tongue, which is the pas de cheval. We close everything to fifth, arms first, and then we take the opposite arm. We go a flick tongue du side, that's écarté de rond. Now we're going to swap the arms. Later on, we will do it in one go. Right now we do it one after the other, and then we pivot or swivel to tongue du effacé de rond towards the front right corner of the room, point two. A tongue lié forward, plié force, transfer. A tongue lié backwards, plié force, transfer. And then we do a beautifully elegant petit battement, beat front, behind, press the foot to fifth position and ready for the other side. And the other side, I show you facing and mirror you. So you should have now the left leg in front and the right arm goes up. Flick the foot, tongue du. Close everything, swapping arms. Now same arm and leg are active. Flick tongue du to the side, écarté de rond. Swap the arms, it helps you to rise up, lift higher and pivot to effacé de rond. Facing now the left corner of the room for you, point eight. We have a tongue lié forward, it's transferring from one place to another. Tongue lié back. Then 
we bringing the toes to the front ankle bone, the Achilles tendon in the back, press the foot to fifth and prepare the arms for the second round where I'm going to turn around again for you. We're going to add the plie, so you should face the left corner now with the right leg front, the left arm up. And we come into a flick. At the time of the extension, we're bending the standing knee. And then we're zipping everything up, swapping arms. Flick, the moment we extend the right leg, we're going to bend the left leg. So it feels like a bow and arrow sensation. Now the left arm will go up, the right arm will go to the second position and we're going to stretch the left leg and moving our hips towards the front right corner onto a straight leg. Then we have the same bitty but mang and closing, preparing the arms for the other side. I'm going to face and mirror you. So you should be facing the front right corner, point two, with your left leg in front and the right arm up. Coup de pied. Plie. Back to zero position. Changing arm. Flick into a coup de pied. Plie, tendu, écarté de rond. Trying to lift your whole being already to stretch yourself up and around into the pivot. Beat front, beat back, press to fifth and finish. So let's look at some tips how to make it easier and more successful for you. Let's begin with the footwork. So pas de cheval is the flick into the extension and the emphasis is on the flicking and then a long, long stretch into the tongue. When you see horses walking in the streets, perhaps police horses, you will see they're going because pas de cheval means step of the horse. So we do it with a pointed foot and in a turn out. So it goes papa and close. Da, da. What's happening now? At the bar, you know, I'd like you to press the heel down, having the weight on the heel. And there I have a whole article about why I think that's important and I recommend it. I will put the link in the description. But in the center, we need to press the weight onto the forefoot so there's hardly any weight on the heel, it's very light because now you're going to move on the forefoot. You don't want to pull the heel back because the danger of turn in as much as lifting the hip over the toe and pulling this hip or the thigh bone back and presenting that heel, the front heel. From here, pressing through each joint of the foot, you have 33 joints in your foot. We won't use all of them, but you really want to think pressing through the joint. Now the back foot is going to push the hip over the front leg, then we reverse it. Pressing all the joints of the foot into the floor, the front foot is going to push the hip back over the back leg. And then we're going to present the heel forward and bringing the little toe to the ankle bone then the heel, and then you press through the joints of your foot into a satisfying fifth position. Now I'm going to show you the second version we do. We have a flick. When you bend the knee, it's as if someone pulls the knee on a string sideways, but you want to resist with your entire being. You want to go up, and you want to feel it, or engage your piriformis muscle, the muscle that goes from the side of your thigh bone back to the sacrum. This is where you want to feel it. You do not want to have any pressure on your quads. So maintain the turnout, then he goes to the side, you go up. And then you stretch everything back to the midline. Same thing, you flick, some person pulls the knee to the side, another person pulls your head up to the sky. Now the weight is on the forefoot again, and you want to drill it down when you pivot. And drill it down in a spiraling motion to pivot. You're going to press down. Now the ball of the back foot pushes your hip over the front, and you should have no weight on the back leg. Pressing down, this foot pushes the hip up and over, almost as if you're jumping high up. 
and then the weight is completely on the forefoot because you have to let go of this leg. Up. And with that movement, I pull myself even more up from my lower abdomen. Up, behind. Then I press the foot down and stretch my spine up. Let's have a look at the arm movements. First, you can look into the front palm, showing your neckline. Fourth, showing your other neckline. When we do a tongue I always feel my elbows being pulled up to the ceiling, right? So I keep my shoulders right to change. I lift, imagine the elbows being pulled up whilst you resist with your shoulder blade muscles. Now this arm, when it goes up to fifth, will lift my whole side, my entire side up. So I'm light to pivot. I'm already having all the weight on that standing leg forefoot without sitting, but by pushing the forefoot down, I'm going to be higher up and lift. I keep the arms, I keep the arms, and how do I close them? The back of the hand goes down, then I turn the palms around, no extra allongé because we don't have time, and open to the other side. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please do let me know. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can also buy me a coffee. The link is down in the description or you can click the thank you button at the corner of the video. Bye for now.